The most important problem that a bilateral deal between the United States and China needs to resolve is Chinese theft of U.S. firms' technology. Unless the Chinese agree to stop stealing technology, and the two sides devise a way to enforce that agreement, the U.S. will not have achieved anything useful from Trump's tariffs. Cambridge, it's beginning to look like U.S. President Donald Trump will yield to the Chinese in America's trade conflict with China. The United States threatened to increase tariffs on imports from China from 10% to 25% on March 2 if no agreement was reached. But Trump recently said that the date is flexible and may be postponed because of the progress being made in the ongoing bilateral talks. Vitek Radwanski, AFP, Getty Images Photographer is my life, Getty Images Fred Du for Pool, Getty Images Fair enough, but progress is in the eyes of the beholder. The most important problem that needs to be resolved is not America's massive bilateral trade deficit with China. It is that the Chinese are stealing U.S. firms' technology and using it to help Chinese companies compete with those same firms in China and around the world. The Chinese do this in two ways. First, U.S. firms that want to do business in China are required to have a Chinese partner in to share their technology with that firm. That compulsory sharing of technology is explicitly forbidden by World Trade Organization rules. Since joining the WTO in 2001, the Chinese have ignored this rule and disingenuously claim that U.S. firms voluntarily agree to share their technology because they want to be active in China. Second, the Chinese use the Internet to enter the computer systems of U.S. firms and steal technology and blueprints. Chinese President Xi Jinping agreed with then-President Barack Obama in 2015 that his government would stop doing this. But after a temporary decline, such cyber theft has resumed, presumably because state-owned companies and others have the ability to reach into the computer systems of U.S. firms. Despite Trump's upbeat talk about progress in the talks, there is no suggestion that the Chinese will agree to stop stealing technology. Instead, China's chief negotiator, Vice Premier Liu He, has emphasized that the Chinese will reduce their large bilateral trade surplus by buying U.S. soybeans and natural gas. A sharp reduction in the U.S. trade deficit with China would enable Trump to claim victory and give him something to celebrate when she visits him at his home in Florida sometime in the next few months. There are easy bragging rights in a dramatic reduction of the U.S. trade deficit with China, which, year after year, has been the largest of America's bilateral trade deficits. In 2017, the deficit with China was $375 billion, or two-thirds of the total U.S. trade deficit. So the Chinese are clever to offer to buy enough U.S. commodities to cut that very visible imbalance. For a limited time only, get unlimited access to On Point, The Big Picture, and the PS Archive plus our annual magazine, for less than $2 a week. Subscribe but while that would reduce the bilateral trade deficit with China, it would have no effect by itself on the total U.S. trade deficit. As every student of economics knows, a trade deficit reflects the fact that a country chooses to consume more than it produces. As long as a country consumes more than it produces, it must import the difference from the rest of the world. If the Chinese do buy enough to reduce the bilateral trade deficit, the U.S. would end up importing more from other countries or exporting less to other countries. The total U.S. trade deficit will not decline unless the U.S. reduces total demand by saving more. That is a matter for U.S. policymakers, it is not something the Chinese can do for America. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin has emphasized another largely irrelevant Chinese offer, a promise to prevent the value of the renminbi from declining relative to the dollar. While a stronger renminbi would make Chinese goods less attractive to U.S. buyers, thereby reducing the bilateral trade deficit, it would not reduce America's global trade imbalance. Moreover, although the renminbi dollar exchange rate does vary from year to year, the variations have been small.
Today, a dollar buys CN 6 yen and 70 sen. A year ago, the dollar exchange rate was CN 6 yen and 30 sen, and two years ago it was CN 6 yen and 90 sen. A decade ago, in February 2009, a dollar bought CN 6 yen and 80 sen. In short, there is nothing to celebrate if the Chinese agree to stabilize the value of their currency relative to the dollar. The key issue is technology theft. Unless the Chinese agree to stop stealing technology and the two sides devise a way to enforce that agreement, the U.S. will not have achieved anything useful from Trump's tariffs.